Sports Live and ATL here. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Road to 3K is in full effect. Uh, click the notification bell, share to your media outlets, click the like and or dislike button. It all helps the algorithm. Um, I wanted to finally come on here, everybody, and uh, talk about the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, it, was, it was disappointing. You know, I didn't want to just pop on here and just say some things without thinking because uh, you know from a sports perspective I really I really am passionate about my teams and all I want to do is see my teams win and uh, the last two games especially the last one were just extremely you know the, it's not the ending that I, that I expected um, but with that said got to do the due diligence I wanted to just enjoy the weekend and then uh, on Monday's premiere today, you know, get one final video in because I will not talk about the Atlanta Hawks again until the season. I will not watch the NBA Finals. I will not watch any pressers, any post games. I don't want any news on the Hawks, please. I don't want anybody texting me about anything. Nothing. At all. Um. But I'm going to give my... my I guess so-called recap and everything and then move on. Okay, first of all, congratulations to the Milwaukee Bucks for advancing to the NBA Finals to take on the Phoenix Suns. Painful to say the least. Um, but they deserved it more. And I'll explain why in a minute. But congratulations to the Bucks. I have no dog in the fight. I don't care who wins. Um, I don't. But it's good to see there's fresh blood out there now. Fresh teams making it instead of always LeBron, whatever team he's on, or the Golden State Warriors. Now I want to talk about the series first, and then I'll talk about the season. As far as the, the Eastern Conference Finals against the Milwaukee Bucks, the Atlanta Hawks had a great opportunity. You know, I, I, I want to go here on record. I'm not disappointed at what the Hawks did this year. The Hawks, and I've heard this the last four days or so you know when it was two to two and two to one bucks and three to two bucks and then whatever the Hawks had a great year you should be proud I am proud I'm proud of, the, of what the Hawks did you know I said eight months ago I felt the Hawks could make it to the Eastern Conference Finals it's on video so I'm one of those who gave them a legitimate chance to get there I said they, they would be a three to six seed they were actually five probably could, you know pretty much played like a three and four so I understand that, and, but I'm one of those that, that foresaw what could happen. Now, did I really, when it actually happened, how did I feel? I was kind of, I was exhilarated, as you could see from the streams, but I was a little surprised too. Not surprised at making it to the Eastern Conference Finals, but surprised how they got there, you know, and everything. So, but in this Buck series, I'm extremely disappointed for various reasons. Number one, extremely disappointed the fact that our final three games were pretty much decided without Trey Young. You know, if there's one thing and people were talking about Giannis going out, and that's that, that that's that was very, I was unfortunate in itself, and hopefully he'll play in the finals because all I kept hearing was the last couple of weeks, oh Giannis deserves it. It's what's best, you know, for NBA. If Giannis makes it, he deserves it. Well, Trey Young deserved it too. Okay, let's don't kid ourselves. Granted, Giannis has been in this situation in the Eastern Finals a couple times, deep playoff runs, and failed. But that, 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 that wasn't my problem. That's not the Atlanta Hawks' problem. Just because Giannis is a darling and everybody wants to see him in NBA Finals, that had nothing to do with my Hawks. My Hawks just happened to be the team that stood in his way. And selfishly, that's all I cared about. Now, I didn't like to see injury in anything. And I'm, you know, looking back at it now, I'm glad that he's, he's in there. You know, I'm glad he's, over, he's in there over any LeBron team or any super team or any Golden State Warrior team because the Bucks busted their ass in this series. You know, the Hawks took a lot of criticism and and didn't get a lot of respect, but the Bucks took a lot of criticism too after allowing the Hawks to get the game four and tie it up. You know, listless, didn't look prepared. They needed their guys to step up, and they did. You know, I got all respect for, for Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez and Jeru Holiday and um, even, what's his name, Pat something. These guys coming off the bench, Portis, stepping up. 
The, the Bucks stepped up without Giannis. The Hawks did not step up without Trey Young. You know, and I know they stepped up in game four. But when it really mattered, five and six, you had an excellent opportunity. Because in game four, Giannis was still there through three quarters about. But when you but when you had an opportunity to make it to the NBA Finals without their best player, that right there is where the players are supposed to step up and, and embrace the moment. The Hawks didn't embrace the moment. The Hawks failed under pressure. The Hawks crumbled. Now, people say it's because of experience. Okay, but you got Nate McMillan. You got Lou Williams. You got Danilo Gallinari. You got Clint Capella. These guys right here have playoff experience. Okay? So, I don't buy that 100%. I know the Bucks had a lot of good players who've been in this situation before, but that's no excuse. You're two wins away from the NBA Finals. You got some experience. Hawks got a lot of deserved experience against the uh, Philadelphia 76ers winning improbable games. So, at that time, when you're down to... Two to two, two out of three games to get you in an NBA Finals, all that goes out the window as far as I'm concerned. You have, you've been experienced enough at the moment to get you over the hump. And what starts with, with success is being prepared. The Hawks were not prepared for game five and were not prepared for game six. They were mentally beat before they even got on the court. The way they started out those two games was just abominable. Game five for the first part, was just abominable. But in game six, I was extremely disappointed in that effort. I don't know how you could come out. And keep in mind, the Hawks never led in the last two games, not once. How you could come out in game six at home. We already know you had, you know, you needed to win to go to game seven, which would have been tonight. And that would have been a long story and a, long, and a tall task. But you got to come out better. The Hawks can't... The Hawks played that game six like it was a regular season game. It was embarrassing. The crowd is trying to the crowd is lit before the game. The crowd is trying to get behind the team. And you saw what happened late when Cam Reddish was doing his thing. The Hawks fans who went there, I feel bad for. Bandwagon or not, I feel bad for them. They deserved better. A listless Hawks team is what came out. They showed no energy, no heart. They didn't they act like they didn't want to be there. They were getting beaten on everything. They were jogging up and down the court. They were jacking up shots, complaining to the referees. I don't understand how they came out like that. But and, and that goes all on Nate McMillan though. For I mean, not all of it, but part of it. Because he motivated them in game four, but sure as hell didn't work in game five and six. But the players gotta be held accountable too. They're the ones that are on the court. And another thing that bothers me is that considering the fact that they came out so listless in the first half, they were only down by four points at halftime. Four points. And then you come out in the third quarter, and by late third quarter, you're down by almost 20. That was embarrassing. That was utterly embarrassing. I'm doing the stream, and I just could not believe what I was watching. Thank God I had to do some things with the dog, but I kept, I had it. And I was just looking at it, and I was just shaking my head. I was like, how in the hell? And then Cam Reddish goes off, and the Hawks cut it down to six points. But we all knew, and, I, and Robbie White and I said it. I said it. It's false hope. It's what we do here in Atlanta. Just when you think you're out of it, they suck you back in before they rip your heart out. So when we were making that run, I was praying that we were going to win it, but I didn't expect to. I expected something to happen. And the Bucks started making plays. You know, kudos to Cam Reddish. We saw something that really that came out of that. But it's sad when he's the only one that's showing up. A guy who hadn't played in, what, five months or whatever? In a game six at home. The only man who showed up. Bogdanovich, the last three games. Kudos to him. Almost 30, 25, 30 points a game. Almost mid, mid-20s. mid So for the first part of the series, we're, we're wondering where Bogdanovich is. And then he finally starts to heal and starts making shots. And then everybody else chooses to not know how to play basketball. Game five and six was horrible. It, 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 it's non, it was pretty much non-competitive, and it was, an, it was an embarrassment and a sad way to end. Another sad way to end is having your superstar player basically non-existent for three games. Trey Young should have not been on the court. Now, I appreciate and respect the fact that he wanted to get up there and play, and, you know, it's winner win or go home, but I wish the other Hawks had that mentality. Trey Young is still injured, obviously can't really make some plays. He made a few, but you could tell he wasn't, he wasn't ready. But he said, hey, man, shoot me up. You know, our season's on the line. 
But Kevin Herter didn't see that. Clint Capella didn't see that. John Collins sure as hell didn't see that. It was a bogey show and Cam Reddish coming off the bench late. That's sad. Um, and people can comment and reply to what they want, but I, 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 I say things as I see it. That was an embarrassing way to end those last two games. It is sad that the Hawks came out looking so lethargic in game five and six. And um, when I look back at the series, to me the turning point was game three. We're up. We're, we're, we're tied one game apiece after splitting in Milwaukee. We're dominating game three. I mean, dominating early. And then we're still leading pretty good when Trey Young gets hurt in the third quarter. Out of, out of all the things, stepping on a ref's foot, out of all the area on the court, his pinky toe or ankle had to find the ref's foot. That's so Atlanta. That is so Atlanta unfair. So we, we, we had to go basically the rest of that game without Trey Young. And he's out, and we wound up blowing it late because he tries to come back on the court late, but he just wasn't wasn't the same. So we let that lead get away. We blew it. We blew game three. Guys didn't step up. Okay, kudos game four. They came out firing, did really well. I expected more going into game five and six, and then that crap show in game five, and then the listless disappointment in game six. But kudos to Trey Young for trying to come back in game three, doing everything he could, putting the team on his shoulders in game six. I, I, I have no, no disappointment, ill will with Trey Young. He carried us. He helped us get here. And you want to talk about unfair? That was unfair. You talk about Giannis being hurt now, unfair? Trey Young hurt. That was unfair. Because clearly with him out, the Hawks folded. John Collins, max contract? Yeah, right. He did some good things in the playoffs. I'm not going to sit here and say he didn't. But no, we needed him to step up in five and six, and he failed. We needed Kevin Herter to step up. He did a lot of good things in the playoffs, definitely. But when it mattered, he failed. Danilo Gallinari held his own. He started playing a lot better this series. Kudos to him. Solomon Hill, I don't know where you were. We barely used Tony Snell. Lou Williams tried what he could. He had a good game four, but we needed his leadership in game five and six, and that didn't happen, especially in game six. But kudos to Lemon Pepper Lou. I hear he said he wants to come back, so we shall see. There's a bright, there's a bright future for the Hawks, and I'm not talking about long down the road right now. I said before the season started I wanted the Hawks to make the playoffs. They did. I wanted the Hawks to win the division. They did. I wanted the Hawks to make some noise in the playoffs. They superseded it. I said the Hawks could contend and make the Eastern Conference Finals. They did. And I said I would give them a small pass this year because they hadn't been in the playoffs in years and they were building within and then getting some key pieces. Not superstar players, but key pieces. And I'm sticking to it. I'm disappointed. I'm crushed. I felt like we should have come out and played better at game five and six, and who knows. But the better team did win in the Eastern Finals in the Bucks. But that doesn't take away the fact that I expected them to get it done um, five and six in a much better effort. Could have done that. Uh, but I expect an NBA title next year. I said that during the offseason. I expect an NBA championship. I expect the Hawks to add to the pieces. I expect, Trey, obviously, Trey Young to be back. Herder, Galinari, Bogdanovich, Clint Capella, Lou Williams wants to come back. I think we need to get rid of Solomon Hill. I think we uh, probably need to get rid of Tony Snell to free up some money. Because uh, he was healthy and he barely got a chance to play in the playoffs. Um, I think we got to look at some of these backups that we got. Let them go. Obviously involve Cam Reddish more. We're going to get DeAndre Hunter back. We're going to be a player in the free agent market. I have no doubt in my mind. So we're going to improve this team. And I expect an NBA title next year. No, Nothing less will, will satisfy me after the team that we're putting together and what I saw in the playoffs. We got a taste of it. A cusp. This Hawks team went farther than any team that I rooted for since 1980, even farther than the 2015 Eastern Conference Finals team. Because that year, we didn't win a game. We won two games and probably should have won a third. Definitely let game three get away. And with better effort, who knows what could have happened in game six because we were only down four at half and fell apart. Game five, I don't know what happened with that one. That was just embarrassing. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and say I'm not disappointed. I'm disappointed that the season ended like it did. Uh, I know we proved all the haters wrong again. You, uh, the Hawks 
the Hawks were behind the eight ball since the first game against the Knicks. And eventually, if the haters, eventually if the haters keep saying we're going to lose, eventually we're going to lose. And then, and, and I have no idea what they're saying because I haven't seen a post game video from the Hawks or anybody since we lost. And I will not. I, I'm it's in the back burner. I don't care to to listen to anything on it. You know, I don't. It, like I said, it's still extremely disappointing, but I'm very happy with the, the team the Hawks have and put together. They've made it fun again. You know, but maybe we can stop again. The Atlanta teams have been too legit to quitting, rising up, brotherhood, believe. Can we stop with these stupid slogans? I tried to believe, but, there, but you see what happened? I told you. There's a reason why I'm, not, I'm never 100% confident. Because I did believe the Hawks were going to win uh, Game 6. Yeah, right. And I did believe the Hawks had a good chance to win Game 5. Boy, that was in the first quarter. We were done. So, Atlanta sports is cursed. I, I clearly believe that. I'm not saying cursed about the play on the court. But when you have your best player, for some damn reason, find a referee's foot in Game 3 and we're leading and he stays in healthy, I believe we finish it off. And who knows where the series could have gone. I will blame Atlanta sports and the sports gods. I will. People can say what they want. I give all. I give the Bucks all the credit. But you don't think if it was any team other than Atlanta on the front of that jersey, like you think Bobby Portis would have found the foot? No. You think uh, LeBron James or Stephen Curry would have found the foot? No. Kyrie Irving would have found the foot? Probably not. Devin Booker found the foot? No. We found the foot because it says Atlanta on the jersey. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, great year by the Hawks, without a doubt. I'm very proud of them. I'm disappointed in, you know, the effort in the last two games that we played. That was embarrassing. Uh, embarrassed and disappointed that we let game three get away. Disappointed that we lost home court after winning game one. Just disappointing. But the best teams are in the finals. I don't care to watch it. I could care less. Good luck to either one, the Suns or the Bucks. Yay. Golf clap. Whatever. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say about that. But I am very thankful for the season the Atlanta Hawks put together. And uh, NBA title next year, nothing less. I will accept nothing. I don't want to be in this situation next year. I'm in this situation next year sitting here saying this again. No, you won't hear this again. There's no next year. There's no this and that. Atlanta sports, I don't know when we're going to win championships. I'm one of the most passionate, loyal fans for Atlanta sports that you will ever see. But yet, every all the other teams get rewarded, not me. I, out of all my years on YouTube, I've seen an Atlanta United uh, MLS Cup championship. Not the main, but still a title. That's it. My whole life, I've only seen since 1980 a 95 World Series and an Atlanta United MLS Cup championship for my professional sports. That is it. Out of all the good teams that we have had. And I deserve better than that as a loyal fan. You know, it's tiring to see other fan bases who have loyal fans win titles all the time. And there are unloyal fans who get to see their team win titles. Why not me? Why is it? Why am I always congratulating somebody else? Oh, and once again, Atlanta team gets eliminated at home. I don't know how many times I've seen that throughout the years. So these past couple years have been brutal. The Braves blowing the NLCS, 3-1 to one lead against the Dodgers. The Hawks letting a golden opportunity get away. So these last couple, these last seven, eight months have not been good. You know, but uh, we'll see. So no more Hawks talk on my channel until next season, which I think it starts in October or November. No more Hawks talk. No more NBA talk. I don't want to hear it. Don't ask me any questions, please, unless there's some kind of news with the Hawks players or – I do expect Nate McMillan to come back as head coach next year, and hopefully he's learned his lesson because those, even though the players are at fault for five and six, coaching had something to do with it too. But he he definitely deserves to be back, and I'm proud of what Nate McMillan did. He just he crumbled under the pressure just like the Hawks did. Some of those decisions by sitting our starters in game six for a little bit were ridiculous. You know. I thought he could have come out with a better lineup in game five, but it is what it is. You go back and look at it, whatever. But uh, that's it. Sports Live in the ATL. Thanks, everybody, for who followed my Hawks streams in the playoffs. Some of my best content I've had in a long time. A lot of support. Um, 
I will be doing the Italy game tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, semifinals uh, against Spain in the EuroLeague, and then we'll go on from there. So Sports Live and ATL. Atlanta Hawks, thank you for a wonderful season. Despite my disappointment, let's get that championship next year, and I will see all of you in the next one.